Okay, welcome back to a new tutorial. This week, we're gonna be creating this grass trail growth effect. Let's jump in and get started. Okay, so to begin with, we're gonna to wanna to drop in a plane. I'm gonna up the segments. Uh, let's go with 200 by 200. And let's just kind of make it a little bigger. And we'll get our framing done first. So I'm gonna actually go into my camera and I'm gonna turn the focal length up to 70. And we kind of just wanna get our shot figured out first. So we just wanna get a lot closer really to the, uh, to the plane. So if we just maybe expand it a little bit and just get right in close so that we kind of fill up as much of the frame as possible. We can come back to adjust this later, but for now, we just want to get a general idea of the shot. So that'll do for now. So now we can bring in our matrix object. So if we hold down here and go to matrix scatter, so we've now got a scatter object in the scene. If we go over to the mode and change this to object and get the eyedropper and hit the plane, we've now got our scatter object scattering instances over the plane. So we could go and up the count now. Uh, we could maybe just put it up to, let's try 5,000 and we actually need to scatter something on there. So I've already gone ahead and got my grass asset set up because I did change the materials. But all I did was if you've got Redshift, um, then you can open the asset browser and search grass and they've got plenty of grass assets here to use. Uh, I picked this one. So I'm pretty sure Redshift now comes with Cinema 4D by standard. So most people should have this, but if you don't, you could always go to a 3D asset website and find a grass model to download. So I just brought that one in and I actually changed the materials as you could see in the example. I just went into, it's really simple. I didn't do anything complicated. I just added in a color correct node and changed the hue until it was like a blue color. And then I literally just copy and pasted that into all these different ones. Um, but of course you could spend more time to make a, a nice grass material. So first off with the scatter selected, I'm going to add a random effector um, and I'm gonna go into the parameters, turn off position, turn on rotation, and I think it would be B, yes. So I'm gonna add some random rotation just so that everything looks not so the same. It's not gonna change it too much, but um, it's good to just have, it looks a little bit more natural. Uh, we could also maybe add a little bit of random in the scale, probably not too much. So at the moment, we've just got instanced cubes over the plane. So we want to change these to our grass object. So in this redshift tag that came with our scatter object when we added it in, uh, in this particle tab, we've got this mode here. At the moment, it's optimized spheres, but we want to change this to custom objects. And then all we need to do is drag in our custom object. And it's not gonna change in the viewport, but if we were to change to rendered mode, let's just start the IPR. And you can see we've got our, our grass scattered on the plane. So I'll come back out of that. We don't need that one right now. Uh, we definitely could up the count of this grass. Uh, let's go back into the count and let's up this. Maybe let's go 7,000. We could up this count quite a lot for once the effect is set up because we don't actually need uh, a lot of it for the for that look that I created in the example. We'll actually just go ahead and create this uh, growth setup now. So again, with this scatter object selected, if we go to this plane effector, add it in, and we want to turn off position, turn on scale, uniform scale, and let's go negative one. So now all our instances are scaled to nothing, so we can't see them. Um, but what we want to do is if we add in a sphere, this is what's going to kind of drive. It's kind of like the visual representation of, of the effect that's taking place. So I'm going to scale this down to something a lot smaller. And just to begin, I'm going to hold shift and add a spherical field to this sphere. And I'm going to just scale it down so that it's roughly the same size. I've come out of this camera and hit S so we can focus on the field. And yeah, it's just about the same size. It doesn't need to be perfect, but yeah, around here is, is good. So I'm gonna animate this sphere actually, just moving along this plane. So I'm gonna grab the sphere. I'm gonna move it over here to begin with. 
and I'm going to add some keyframes. So I'm going to add an X and a Z keyframe. Um, and then actually I might move it just a little bit further up. Let's keyframe that again. And let's move forward. I'm going to actually first just add some more keyframes to our timeline. Let's move forward to around the 45th frame. And let's move the sphere into a new position. Maybe go into our camera so we can actually see where it's going. So maybe we could go here, add the keyframes. Let's go forward again, be around 95, move it up here, add the keyframes, go forward again, It'll be around 140 and we can just kind of set this one off just off of the frame and add those in. And because our keyframes are already Bezier, uh, they should already have a nice curve to them so it's not going to look so uh, linear. So once I hit play, we've got our sphere just kind of animating through the plane. So we could play around with where these keyframes are. For now, this looks pretty good. Uh, and we've got our field attached to the sphere, which is important because that's how our effect is going to be driven. So I guess a way of visualizing what we're doing, if we go to this plane and we right click, we go to other tags and add a vertex map. Let's turn off this use to form points. Um, we can add a freeze and set this to grow um, and then maybe just drop the radius to 4 and effect strength to 10. So right now this isn't going to do anything so what we need to do is actually drag our spherical field in, drop that in above the freeze and set its blending mode to max. So now let's hit play and we can see visually how this effect is going to be driven. So we're going to use this vertex map to drive the scale of that of those grass instances. If you want the speed of the growth to be different, you just need to change the effect strength, maybe just lowering it. If you don't want it to grow too much, then you can lower it. You could even just drop it to zero and then it will just stay a perfect like path. So if I change that to zero, you can see it just stays the same the whole way. And we could up it even more. And you can see it grows a lot quicker. If it goes too quick, then it might even overtake your sphere in, it, in its uh, tracks. But um, yeah, so I think 10 was a good number for me because you just don't lose that look that you're trying to achieve. But just see what works for you. So now that we've got this set up, if we go back into our plane, and maybe we could rename this to scale, uh, just so we know in case we wanted to add anything extra later on. But we can go into the field and we can drop our vertex map into the field section. You can see now I've added this, all the instance cubes have come back because now you can see underneath that vertex map is all red, which means the effect that we've set up in the scale is not taking place. Once it turns yellow, that means the effect is taking place. If I hit play now, you can see it's doing the reverse of what I showed in the example. Still a really cool effect, but not what we're trying to do in this tutorial. So we just need to invert what this is doing. Now in the fields for the scale effector, we just need to invert it by adding in a curve. So if we drop in this curve and we can just reverse these two curves, which is looking nice. So now we can hit play again and we've got the effect taking place. Which looks really nice. Now, if we were to go into the rendered mode, we wouldn't really, it doesn't look too great right now. So I might just add in a, an area light, hold shift, drop that in. And I'm gonna add a target tag now, animation, target tag, and hit the eyedropper and I'm just gonna set it to my folder because it's in the center of the world. I'm gonna move this somewhere like this. Maybe drop this a little bit. And maybe I'm gonna turn the spread. Pretty sure I dropped this quite a bit. Maybe I could start the IPR. Yeah, we can see it a lot better here. Uh, I'm gonna drop that spread a bit more. Let's just see what it looks like in the camera view.
so yeah i've got a light set up now so what we could do is like i was saying earlier is we could add more to the count so it's a bit more dense so we could up this to like sixteen thousand. and yeah you can see it's way more dense now so if i was to change into my all in one view so i've got my uh redshift render view tab yeah we can see this is looking really nice really dense grass um i might be able to play some of it through but we can see it looks pretty good now the sphere is a little bit low in the ground it kind of looks like the grass is spawning inside of it so what we could do is jump out of the camera view go to the sphere uh, and let's just lift it up maybe uh, if we go to the coordinates and just lift it up and then grab the spherical field and drop that back down because we need that to be hitting the floor for the vertex map so it's still going to follow its position but it's um, the sphere will look a little bit higher maybe just not too much higher maybe something like this go back into the camera view let's hit progressive rendering again and check if this is working yeah so we've got the sphere sitting above the grass looking like it's driving that growth so yeah that is really the effect set up uh, you could just create any custom spline um, to drive the shape it doesn't need to be keyframed with the coordinates you could create a custom spline that the shape follows if you want to have a little bit more control and i guess it would probably be a bit easier to make edits and adjustments but yeah it's a really nice effect and i guess you could do the reverse as we saw it's that looks cool as well where the shape going through is making them scale down that's also a cool effect but yeah that's it for this week's video thank you so much for watching if you learned something new please be sure to drop a like um but yeah i'll see you in next week's video